um, that have uh, lots of figures for us to mark up and talk about and things like that. Now, you probably know a lot of this stuff already, but I'm taking this opportunity to go back over some notation that you may have forgotten or, or things like that and uh, just point out a few things that maybe you didn't know um, or just need a refresh on. So the first thing is if you're talking about a parallelogram, then the opposite sides are parallel. They have two pairs of parallel sides. We indicate parallel sides using an arrow drawn on the uh, line. And if we have multiple sets, then we will use multiple arrows uh, to indicate that. So the top and the bottom are parallel, the left side and the right side are parallel to each other. Not only are they parallel, they are also congruent. So we can add a vertical line that indicates congruency. Uh, and the same thing is with parallel lines. If we have multiple uh, pairs of congruent things, then we use multiple lines to indicate that. So if we know that this side up here is uh, 8 feet, then we also know that this side down here is 8 feet. And let's say that the vertical side is 10 feet. If we're told one of them is 10 feet, then we know that the other one is 10 feet. Okay? Um, we can also use some variable expressions in there as well. Now, in addition to the sides, opposite angles are congruent. So this, the angles that are opposite from one another, these would be opposite, top right, bottom left are congruent, and then the top left and the bottom right are congruent. Same thing there, we use the curves and angles to indicate congruency. Uh, so we use multiple uh, arches there to indicate that. Now, the good thing about that is, even though we have four angles in this parallelogram, if I tell you, uh, let's say for example, I say that this one is 110 degrees. I only have to give you one angle measure in a parallelogram and you can tell me what the other four, or excuse me, the other three angles are. Because opposite angles are congruent, then this one is also 110 degrees. Okay, so we're up to 220 degrees and total is 360. So if we've used 220 and we've got 360, we've got 140 left. 140 split between two congruent angles would leave us with 70 degrees for those two congruent angles. Now, looking at the next property there, consecutive angles are supplementary. So consecutive means that it's in order. So let's order, uh, let's number these uh, angles here. I'm just going to start with the top left and I'm going to go clockwise. One, two, three, four. So one and two angles would be considered supplementary. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, would be considered consecutive and because they're consecutive they're supplementary. Well the reason for that, uh, let's look at if these two lines are parallel, the top side right here would be the transversal. So what would we call angles one and two in our parallel line terminology? Same side interior. Same side angles have a sum of 180. <clears throat> so let's say, for example, I tell you that angle one is 100 degrees. Then you would say that angle two is 80 degrees. And then because angle 2 is 80 degrees, then angle 3 is 100 degrees. Well, that's also 100 degrees because your opposite angles are congruent. And then angle 4 is also 80 degrees. Opposite angles are congruent and consecutive angles are supplementary. All right, so that's our angle stuff. Let's look at the diagonals. Our diagonals have a special property as well. Diagonals bisect each other. What does the word bisect mean? Don't know what bisect means? They 
they do go through each other, they do intersect, but it's a little bit more specific than that. Let me draw what I'm talking about. So the diagonals connect opposite vertices. Okay, so when those two diagonals cross, what does it look like happens, maybe? Hmm? Okay, an X happens. Yes, they create an X. Huh? They go through the middle. Okay. Bisect means to cut in half. An angle bisector. Did y'all learn that before? An angle bisector? No. I hope so. Okay. <clears throat> if something bisects something, it cuts it in half. So that means that these two segments are congruent to each other and these two segments are congruent to each other. Now those diagonals are not equal to each other. One is longer than the other, um, so their halves are not equal to each other. But this half is congruent, or this piece is congruent to the other piece and so forth, okay? So diagonals bisect each other, they cut each other in half. All right, so we are...